Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Harky Fishing. This is Sam, and uh, man, glad to have you back for another weekly fishing report. Uh, got to do a ton of fishing this week, so I got a, a lot of good information for you. Um, but the fishing is tough, is the only bad news. Um, first off, it's uh, basically it's like September 6th or 7th now. Um, I have fished five of the last six days and uh, spent about four to six hours a day out uh, on the lake um, in the evenings, night fishing, trying to prepare for a couple championships coming up. And uh, so we're trying to get on those fish and find the, the good quality fish. And uh, anyhow, the uh, lake level's still sitting about 912.1 or 0.2. That's up about three or four inches from last week. Um, we got quite a bit of rain and uh, that, that lake did come up a few inches. Um, the core is still generating water in the evenings, trying to help with electrical demand. So that that level is going to probably start dropping again pretty quickly. Uh, um, water temperatures, man, around the Shell Knob uh, area, um, it is sticking around 82 degrees. Uh, you know, it, I, I see if it's a if it's a cloudy day, a lot of times it's 81 or even sometimes uh, upper 80s. Um, you know, 80.5 or so. Um, I saw 82 last night, it had been a sunny day all day, and so, you know, that water temperature is staying in the 80s, and I really think that that's slowing down a little bit of the normal, um, you know, shallow water migration that some of these bigger fish do. As soon as that thing seems to hit the upper 70s, like 78, 77, 76, there's a huge migration. It usually starts with the smallmouth, the smallmouth will move up shallow, then you see those, uh, those largemouth moving in. And then kind of last but not least, the, the Kentuckys, uh, you know, they're pretty much there all the time. But um, I'm not seeing very many big fish weighed in at these weigh-ins uh, for our tournaments. Uh, you know, four pounders, and that is a big fish. I don't want to make light of that. But, you know, uh, all year we've been seeing five, six, and sevens weighed in. And we haven't seen one of those in about a month, uh, um, yeah, at least three weeks. So, uh um, I feel like it's that you know that part of the bite is is still not quite there. Those fish are moving. They're not in their deep water hunts. Most of them aren't in their shallow water hunts. So uh, they're somewhere in between, and that is some of the toughest fishing. And that's typical September fishing for you. Uh, those fish are usually suspended. They're on a they're on a tree somewhere out in the middle of the lake that's topped out at about 20 feet. You might get lucky and find one but they're challenging to find. So let me a little bit about what the fish have been doing, man. We've really been trying to, to, uh, to get keyed in on where we can find three plus pound bites. And man, it's challenging. Um, you know what, I, I fish brush piles all summer and I've been letting you guys know that those things are, are they're starting to fail. There are still a few fish. If you find the shallow brush piles, um, there's a few fish uh, in those shallower brush piles. And uh, you know, so that's something that you might keep in mind, um, you know, 10 foot to 15 foot brush piles there's still a few fish in those and you can definitely catch the kentuckys out of there once again we're kind of focused on looking for those three pounders so uh, uh kentucky doesn't get us too excited but this fishing report's not about catching you know 15 pounds every time you go out it's more about how to catch fish so you know throwing those uh when you get to the brush piles we're still throwing a 10 inch worm we're throwing a little uh, uh peanut butter and jelly shaky head we throw that chompers uh, green pumpkin uh um, purple fleck and I've even been experiencing uh, or experimenting some with the jigs we were making that have kind of a brown and green uh, um, pumpkin in them. Um, matching that jig up with uh, either the Chompers Twin Tail Trailer. If it's after dark I've been using the, uh, a uh, Yum uh, Christy Crawl in uh, black and blue. It's got a few more it's got basically like swim bait type uh, um, legs on the on the crawl, so it, it makes a little more motion, and I feel like I'm getting a few more bites. I think that's mainly Kentucky bites because the big ones are still hitting anything. If it's a jig out there, it'll hit it. But really, the best bite's probably been the big worm, but man, it's 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 not been great in brush piles. So. The other stuff that we've been trying to do, um, and I mean, I have hit just about every structure that you would maybe expect them on. I've hit a lot of bluff cuts. Um, we still throw the same three baits in those bluff cuts. Had a few, a lot of Kentuckys in those as well. Um, even had one great night where we got like 20 bites in a row. We didn't land them all, but probably caught 10 fish. But the biggest one would have been just over a keeper, like 15 and a quarter. So not the kind of fish we were looking for either, but that, that worked pretty good. Um, and then uh, the other bait this time of year, fall, that, that's been working good and, and it's a total change of, uh, of, of structure is the spinner bait. 
I'm using a black spinner bait with a uh, number six or number seven or even number eight um, Colorado blade. Um, you can experiment with those blades quite a bit. I almost always use a black nickel, but man, you can use a um, you can use a gold, you can use a chrome. Um, just depends on the night and kind of what the moon's like as to what color blade works the best. But we're taking those spinner baits and we're throwing them, uh, you know, on on some flat stuff, basically flats. We'll throw it around, uh, you know, around brush piles, um, you know, next to them. I try not to try not to ever swim a swim bait through those brush or a uh, spinner bait through those brush piles because you'll get hung up most of the time. But with the invention of live scope, uh, I can take that spinner bait and I can swim it right over the top of uh, brush piles and uh, and get it near it, you know, over to the right, over to the left, and uh, and sometimes draw some of those bigger fish out of there. But we're also throwing it on absolutely do nothing, you know, flats that are, um, I, we've been trying to focus on um, pea gravel flats that are points. Um, and I've also been looking for some like mixed rock, some big boulders in it. Um, and I tell you what, it, the spinnerbait bite to me has been the most frustrating bite because I know they're supposed to be doing it. Um, but man, just not catching the quality that I like to catch. In fact, I've caught one three pounder on it in the last five days. And uh, I'm not sure that I've caught another keeper other than that three pounder, maybe one other keeper on a spinnerbait. And I've got about six hours of throwing a spinnerbait. So, you know, to me that is, as bad as it gets i i don't even want to throw it but i just keep making myself throw it because this time of year it's gonna be on um but uh it's not been good to me um i've had better luck um just jumping around looking for uh um, looking for some shallow fish on the same type structure but using different baits like the big worm or a jig um so you know keep that in mind uh you know when you go out september is always one of the toughest months to catch fish um you know be patient don't go out there expecting to catch 15 to 20 pounds it's i mean you'd have to get really lucky to catch that kind of weight um you know our championships are coming up the, the friday night championships this saturday it's 7 a or 7 p.m to 7 a.m so it's a 12 hour long tournament we got a lot of time to try a lot of different things uh you know patience is the key in that thing uh, last year in the tournament um we fished six hours of that tournament and had uh, i think three fish that would have gone about five and a half pounds um you know just an awful awful start um but we finished strong we found some big fish uh, um late in the game last year ended up with 1635 i think we saw last night um on that tournament and uh, and we missed the money by one spot so you know it takes some big weights i don't think this year is going to be that good um you know i think it's going to take at least 15 pounds to get in the money um, still, but uh, oh, boy, it's gonna it's gonna be a tough fishing um, evening, I'm afraid. So, um, one quick side note: you guys that like uh, that are watching this that like walleye fishing, I did find some really good walleye. The walleye seem to be um, really stacking up on the uh, main lake humps that top out about, you know, or well, not necessarily top out, but in that 20 to 30 foot range. Um, took a couple little six years old six year olds out the other day. I'm gonna try to post a picture on here so you may see them while I'm talking. Um, man, they uh, took them out. Um, we used a drop shot um, with about 10 pound uh, leader line. Um, I used braid on a seven foot um, medium action spinning rod. Um, I think it was 12 pound braid. We tied a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader on it. Um, drop shot rig, quarter ounce weight, um, number two Berkeley uh, Abu Garcia um, hook. Berkeley hook, um, drop shot hook. We put a, a, a night crawler on that, about half a night crawler, and man, the walleye ate it up. We had uh, we had four keeper walleye in uh, in just under an hour, and the six year old reeled every one of them in. So, you know, pretty fun times, pretty exciting. Uh, those kids, uh, as you'll see in these pictures, man, they're smiling ear to ear. We had a blast. We caught a lot of shorts too. Uh, caught bass. We caught a ton of perch. You know, it was pretty non-stop action, but it was a great time for those kids. So if you're a walleye fisherman, you know, look in the main lake, find these points, uh, and just, you know, look at your electronics. Uh, you'll usually see them. Uh, uh, we caught these on one that we'd done in a previous uh, video, a little, uh, a little old bridge uh, um, road that went out, an old one that's submersed about 20 feet right there at Big M. Um, so you guys kind of know where that's at. Um, caught some uh, about a week and a half ago right outside of uh, um, Baxter, kind of between Baxter and Campbell Point. Um, there's a big hump over there in uh, what used to be called Red Barn Cove. Um, we had some big catfish and walleye in there. Um, you know, so they're they're starting to get on those pea gravel humps and uh, 
um, and hard humps. You know, the ones that have a hard bottom, that road bed works fantastic. I don't know what it is they like about that, but it's always loaded with small Kentuckys and usually walleyes. So in the summer, that's a great deal, but that's gonna start changing. You know, it's no longer summer. We're seeing 80 degree days and, and we're real close to 50, upper 50 degree nights. So, you know, just keep plugging along, man. I appreciate you watching. Sorry about the long video, but man, take a kid fishing, keep your lines tight. Until next time, see ya.